all right so welcome back again my name is jesse and in this wonderful tutorial we're trying to see how to secure our data and our password in python so in the previous tutorial we saw how to understand some measures right we saw some measures that we can use to secure our login page from attacks right so against sql ingestion we saw how to use some measures to keep us from that but that is not the only security that we need for our system so sometimes it is possible that you may be thinking to secure and then somebody will to have access through your login page through your system into your database right so in that case you have to make sure that you give the next step of protection so the next step of protection is that either you're going to hash your data or you're going to encrypt your data so even if the person is able to get into your system he will not be able to use the data right you'll not be able to have a clear access to your data so it will be either hashed or encrypted so this understanding is what is called data security so let's see what i mean so we have data protection and then data security so simply put data protection is the process of safeguarding important information from corruption compromise or loss right so loss here can be either it is stolen or maybe there is a fire outbreak or something then your data is lost right so data protection comprises of safeguarding your information so mostly it is usually referred to as the protection of natural persons with regard to the processing of personal data so sometimes when you're talking about data protection we also means privacy right protecting people's private information health information health records so that is another way you can also see data protection as so it consists of data safeguarding in which you are making sure that the data is safe and secure right then you also have data availability in which you are making sure that if the person is access asking for the data it is available for usage then you also have data management in which you are going to learn about how to move your data in a secure way and then how to catalog and how to analyze it then finally how to store your data and data storage which consists of primary storage that is on your system and then backup and then archiving right which are two different concepts but they all do the same thing so that is data protection so data security is also another concept right which is very different from data protection but we can find data security under data protection so data security is a process of securing data so that authorized people can access or modify so only authorized people so in that case we are talking about identification identifying who the person is who is accessing the system authentication you are trying to confirm the identity of the user right so you know that this is pe the person now you want to confirm this user right that is authentication and then authorization that is you are trying to tell the person that is he allowed or permitted to do this activity right that is authorization then you also have accounting and then auditing so in, in that case you are trying to record whatever the person is going to do after the person has been authorized to do something you're going to track and trace every activity for the person in that case you can use login or signals to help us with that so let's see what i mean and how to do data security how to secure our data and our password so we're using two methods hashing and then encryption so let's understand it first so first of all we have three different terms we have encoding we have hashing we have encryption which are all different concept right so plain test in the previous tutorial so that we stored our password as plain test straight into our database which is not the best right which is not the best but the best way is to either you hash it or you encrypt it so hashing is a one-way function in which you apply a hash function on your file on your plain test then it's going to create a face size test which is the hash test then you're going to store it into your database right so in case the person wants to get it back again he ha will have to get the hash test before he will be able to get access to it so it's a one-way function once you have hashed it you cannot unhash it right you cannot uncover what is hidden there so that is something about hashing then you also have encryption so encryption is a two-way function in which you are applying a key and an algorithm on a particular plain test right then it's going to convert the plain test into a cipher test right which is something like this and they're going to store that cipher test into your database so in case the person want to have access to that data again he has to go back through the process again it's a two-way function he's supposed to decrypt it use the same key and algorithm to be able to encrypt it or how do i say it? decrypt it or unhide it right so that is the basic difference between hashing and then encryption so hashing is really one-way function right which is usually useful for password then encryption is useful for other forms of data that that you may need access to see what it is right let's say bank details your personal details so let's go on to encoding so encoding is also a two-way function sometimes people en confuse encoding and encryption but they are totally different things but they operate in the same concept so we have encode and decode right so encoding you are going to 
convert your file or your your file into a different file format which is safe and secure and easy to be understood by a different system so you are converting this file into a different file format which can be understood by another system altogether right before you store into your database in that so for example if you are storing media files or image files in sql right it's going to convert it to blob which is a different encoding then it's going to store it inside the database so that in case you want to use it somewhere you can get it from the blob then you convert it back to your media format that is a basic idea so let's so these are some of the things so encoding is transforming data from one form to another and then it usually uses a scheme right but not a private key so in encoding there is no key right but in encryption there is a key and then it's an algorithm in hashing there is no key there's only just a schema or a function to help us with that so let's here's some various hashing that we can use so when it comes to hashing we usually use this one way function we have md5 right we have s sha which is secure hash algorithm we also have blick we also have some other hashing functions that you can use to hash our functions so you usually use four for password hashing and then for storage so we use four for again for digital signature in case you are working with digital signature certificate mostly they use hashing so sometimes when you download a file they tell you that to compare it against a hash right so that is useful to help us check for the file integrity then for encryption you are transforming a plain test into a cipher test that can only be read as a plain test if the user has the secret key so that is something simple so we have two types of encryption we have symmetric algorithm from or symmetric encryption or asymmetric encryption examples of encryption algorithms include rsa and then aes aes right so let's move on to some libraries that we can use to do all of these different stuff so for encoding we can use base 64 we can use unicode several different forms of encoding libraries in python we also have hashing libraries such as hashlib passlib and bcrypt then we also have encryption libraries such as cryptograph and then cryptography and then pi crypto so let's start with it we'll be starting from scratch on how to do the first step of hashing right so that's what we're doing so uh, too much of the talking <laughs> so let's go with first of all we'll begin with hashing right so hashing so we are we have learned that hashing is a one-way function so we'll be importing our library so to install any of the library just go with pip install the library right i'm just going to import it straight away so import hashlib i don't know whether you can see it very well let me make it bigger right you can see it very well now you can see it better now let's see the various things we can do with this particular library so hash let me to bring it out perfectly so these are the various things you can do so you see that it's giving us several stuff so these are this black two with an anana hashing algorithm we have md5 we have pvd we have s script we have sha1 sha224 256 and all of these things right so sha1 was the previous hash algorithm function but it is weak now so the best one is to go with these particular ones right and then these ones so and then we also have shake too so that is the various algorithm that hashlib has to offer us so we can, you can use hashlib to help us with the hashing right so let's work on it so python already have some inbuilt function to help us with that apart from the hashlib python already has hash so if you go with hash like this this is an inbuilt function that can be used to help us see a hash of a particular stuff right so as i said hashing, hashing is not just only for password protection but also to check for the file integrity so let's create a simple file so let's call this one let's say plain bravo test let's call this this is secret right this is secret so in case i want to see the hash of this particular stuff i can just go with hash then i just go with plain test so in memory this is the hash it is being given right this is a number so hash is a fist number that scrambled this so in memory this is how it's going to be very interesting but then that's not what we want we want to use the hash lib library to help us to encrypt it right to make it secure so let's come back here and let's come back again so it's going to be like this so we already we have already seen how to work with all the various methods of hashlib we have seen all these various algorithms so in case i want to use any of these algorithm i'll just go straight away with this simple format so let's go with using hashlib right to hash a to hash a file or a, a test right so now it's going to be something like that so i'm just going to use the same plain test that we had it's going to be my hash test then from here i'm just going to create my hash lib dot the particular algorithm that i have so i can use md5 so md5 right now passing my test so mostly as we learned earlier on that 
there is encoding right so, so sometimes the best way to hash any of these files is to encode them in a format of a string right so that means it's going to go in this particular format to a string dot encode then i'll pass in the particular stuff that i have which was the plain test right if i go with this option now it's going to encode it then i can hash it perfectly that is one way right then from that i'm just going to tell the hash to use the hash digest to digest it perfectly for us digest perfect so now it has hash the particular term so if i go back and i check it again it's no more going to be the same thing here it's not going to be the normal hash one it's going to be totally different it's going to be like this if i check it as this hash test uh, it's a totally different value right so this is because it is using md5 to give us this hash right and it's going to be the same in every way we are trying to hash this particular term so if i copy the same thing that we have and i go in this particular option for this particular library so let's go as hash 02 right and i'm going to change it from this particular format i'll use a different way right so either i can go with this option this or i go with the byte format then I'll pass in my test. So let's go, let's go with the same thing. So this is secret. If I go with this is secret and I check it back again. So let's go back. If I go back and I check it back again as hash test two, zero two, right? And then the other one was zero one. That one is just the normal hash. So let's put it here. Put in a print so that you see the difference between what you are doing. It's going to be print. Right. So if I check the first one, the second one, you're going to see the difference. And now both the first one, which was this one, stored inside the variable. And then the second one that we did again, they all have the same number, right? The same value, right? So this particular library, anytime you use a hash, it's going to use the same hash no matter how, how it is, right? Even if I run it 10 times, it's going to use the same hashing function and it generate the same hash value. So because of this particular stuff, it is good, but if I have time I can get a list of all the words then I'll run the same hash lab on it then I'll get it so I can use it to crack and know what is behind right so that is what is called rainbow cracking right so it is called this rainbow cracking so I can check it out rainbow cracking so that means that you are getting all the list of words a list of words list of all possible words then you apply the same function on it, the same hash function on it then you by that you can detect and predict that okay behind this particular word this is there because this hash lip will produce the same thing over and over again right that is a basic understanding behind it so because of that there's a new concept called sorting right in which you're going to automatically add a unique number a randomly unique number to your password before you hash it so that anytime you run it it's going to be totally different right so be trying to see that one later so that is how to use md5 to do a hash now let's move on to another algorithm you can use to using sha2 right so md5 is good but it's weak right so the new one the most recommended way is sha2 we have sha3 which are better than md5 so let's try that one out so only hash same thing we did test 0 3 right for md5 for md for sha rather so i'll copy the same thing that we had here paste it here so we're going to change the algorithm from this to sha let's say we use two five six we can use sha two five six or any of these particular stuff it's going to encrypt it perfectly for us and you can see from here that because we are using a different hashing function or hash algorithm right it's going to give us a totally longer different value right so this was shots is okay by the shot but yeah this is the same words the same this is a secret but it is giving us a totally different hash test right so this is totally different it's longer and taller right that's a bit understanding behind using hash lip to help us with that so it's very useful very powerful but you can if you have time you can be able to identify the way behind it because it's using the same hash function on it unless you modify it so let's move on to the next concept so from this you can understand that the hash function usually generate a fist test right so because this is sha if i run a new test it's also going to give me even if the test is longer so let's check that one out so i come back here go back and we'll check it out using the same function the same hash function but let's call this one as four or let's call it as three long right this is longer it's a long test right so this is a secret for you right it's a secret for you or secret key something like that secret key Right, so I run this one 
and I check it back again, you're going to see that despite it being longer than the previous one, it's also going to give us almost the same length, right? Right, it gives us the same length, right? Irrespective of how long the ten, ten is, it gives us the same length. If you can check, so you can just go with this option to make it more secure, to, to be more certain that we have got the same length. Let's come back here and let's do it this format. Hope you are learning something. So, this long, and then we can also do the same thing here. Let's make it like this. So, this goes off, then we're just going to put length here. Another one is also going to be length. So I can now print it out. If I print it out, I was supposed to make it better, right? See what I've done. <laughs> Apologies for that. Then do the same thing for this one. It's going to be print. Right, so if I run it now, and now it has given the same length, right? Despite using despite using different length. So despite the word there. The plain test is different. This is longer than this one, but it gave us the same length, right? So that is the concept behind hashing. So hashing is going to give us give you a fixed length based on the hash function you are using, irrespective of the way. That is something very interesting, something very nice, very cool. So let's move on to the next option. So since you have seen that this is okay, but it's not the best because if I give it to if somebody is having time, you can find a means of crashing it, right? Of cracking it by using the rainbow cracking as we learned earlier on so let's move on to something better which is using salt and adding salt to it right so as of as we already learned so we can use a powerful tool another alternative to hash lip which is called bcrypt so bcrypt is a very nice powerful package and library that allows you to be able to hash your text right and then it automatically generate a sort so it's going to automatically generate a sort and store it with the hash result right so this is going to be so anytime you create a hash is going to add the sort to it automatically then it's very useful for matching plain text against hash test stored in database for login so in case you want to you want to use to check for your database you can use hash lip very good or you can use bcrypt that is automatically going to add a sort to it there's also something called work factor or round which is the amount of time and resources required to break the system or process right so let's check it out so i'm just going to start from how to use bcrypt so it's going to be something like this so I'm just go to import bcrypt so import bcrypt so the solution for the hash lip issue of not of generating the same thing is to in introduce a sort that's why we are using bcrypt so bcrypt will automatically hash it and then add the sort to it so let's check the various function we can do with this so there are bcrypt is going to be all the various methods and attributes of this particular package so attributes and then the methods of this library if we check it out it's going to give us some interesting information because we can also check for the password right we can generate a sort right we can also hash password right and there's some other st stuff so i'll come back here i'm going to work on it in a simple way so we're using the same test that we had which was the plain test we did so the plain test right we're trying to see how to hash this one and then add a sort to it so as we learned earlier on so we must first of all compare it to to encode it before you work on it so you can do it like this so let's call it as ha a hash test with bcrypt right so that you can have it as documentation then just go with my bcrypt then i'll just go with my hash hash password right very useful for password Then i'll go the same way i did so i can just either i can encode this one string dot encode or string dot encode Passing the plain test, plain test as we did earlier on, right? So we are encoding it as a byte format. Then from here, I'm going to introduce the sort. So it's going to be crypt. I like that there was something called JSON here, generate sort. So be crypt dot gen sort, right? So the gen sort will automatically generate a sort for us. If I run it, it's working perfectly well, right? So if I go back and I check this. What we have done now it is not just the same hash that we have but now it's having an additional unique value to it so let's run it and see so perfect so this is it so it's going to come into byte format you can see that it's having this particular value here so dollar sign 2 b 12 right then dollar sign then from here 
these are the hash right these are hash very interesting so that is the concept behind be equipped very simple and very nice so this particular value here is a sort that is being added to it and then this is also the 12 day is a work factor or the round right the processing time it takes to do whatever i want to do so we can even change this particular 12 to maybe 15 but the longer it is the slower it becomes then the more it takes up most of your system space right so you can just leave it at the default but you can also check it out perfect so so what if you are using it in your system and you want to check and verify right so with this one with the hash lab we you could create your own custom function because it's going to give you the same thing over and over again you can create your own custom function to help you to check if the hash is the same right if the word is the same but for bcrit because it's automatically generating a salt to it you need the own the bcrit function to help us to check or verify verify the hash right so in our plain test, we realized that our plain test had our plain test that we had had this is a secret there. So in case I want to verify it, in case I'm creating my login system, I want to verify it. Then I can use this particular function of bcrypt dot check password. Right? Then I'll pass pass in my the first value is going to be this particular phrase. So this is secret, right? Then I'll pass in the hash test. So hash test with bcrypt that's a very nice format it's going to return true if it is the same if not the same it's going to return so that it's not working giving us an error somewhere so let's check it out so unicode object must be encoded before checking right so that means that you have must even convert this one to unicode before so it's going to be b just put it b before you can go to unicode then voila true so this way this is secret is the same as what is hashed there this particular one. so with this option it is very useful right you don't need to create another function you can use bcrypt to help you with checking and verifying if the hash test is same as the plain test right and don't forget to make it unicode very interesting perfect so let's do some interesting stuff so in case i also want to set you realize that this one gave us a unique value here right in case i want to modify this particular so that it's being generated i can change the work factor and then it's going to change it for us so we can just come back here so this is going to be setting our own work factor so the work factor is the same as our round which I've already explained. In that case, see what I how I spell round. <laughs> round. Then it's going to be this particular format. So I can just go back to the same thing I did. So let's go to b crypt dot hash password hash password rather <laughs> hash password. And I'll just pass in. Let's go with this option. So this this is secret. This is secret. Then I'm just going to go with the same option of my b crypt b crypt dot gen salt then inside the join salt i'm going to pass in my round so if this round is going to be the work factor so i can pass in the default is 12 if i pass in 15 or 14 it's going to use the same thing it's going to take some time that's giving us an error it's supposed to be rounds not round right rounds the number of iterations is supposed to go through it's going to analyze it and give us the result right so that is something very cool so this is you can see from here that is it's not the same that's change it totally right that is the advantage of big crypt it's going to change totally and give us something different but you can see that from here we had it as 12 right 2 and then 12 but here here it's totally different it is 2 the same sort but different rounds right so it's even 14 because we specify the round to be 12 right that's the basic understanding behind setting your own work factor around you can also check for the time out so which one of them is going to be fast so i can just do something like my normal magic time so the longer you, the more the round you said the longer it takes right so time time it now i'll just do the same thing above so i'll copy this one here let's make it like this one is going to be for the four for the 14 and do another one for the 12 right so this is going to be for 14 this is going to be for 12 the default this is going to be for the default one without any stuff the same temp the same test right but i'm going to check and see which of them is going to be fast using time it right the same thing for this one too so after this one has run we're also going to run it i'm going to see the result perfect this took about how many seconds very very small one fifty eight microseconds right but let's check for the one that you're using a round of 14 right so it's going to take a longer time because it's the longer 
the more the rounds, the slower it becomes and the longer it takes, right? So it's better you leave it at the default. But if you want, you can also use it. You can use your own rounds as you wish. Taking some time to run, so that it's still taking time, right? So it's going to be more than microseconds. It's going to be maybe uh, normal seconds, right? Instead of being 158 microseconds, it's going to take time. Perfect. So you see now, here you can see that it is 3.81, right? And then this is this is microseconds. This is seconds itself, right? Which is not the best. It's even higher, right? So the longer the rounds or the more the rounds, the longer it takes. That's something very interesting, something very simple using the crypt. Very nice, very cool, very awesome. So let's try something else. I'll just copy this one. And the same thing that we have been doing, I'm just going to run it again. You're going to see something different. You can see that if you compare this one to the one we did, so hash wait, hash test, wait. the hash test with bcrypt, the one we did above, we had this hash test, right? This with hash test with bcrypt. Even if I run it again, that is advantage of bcrypt. If I run it again, you can see that it's giving us totally different, right? This is totally different. This is totally different from this, but it's the same way. That is the advantage of using Bcrypt. So it's not like Hashlib that is going to be giving us the same result, but with Bcrypt, it's going to give us different hash anytime you run it, even without the sort. That's the advantage, right? Behind with Bcrypt and then Hashlib. Now let's move on with the Bcrypt and move on to working with something different, right? We'll be working with a different package called Passlib, right? So Passlib gives you the same features, but it gives you the option of doing some other interesting stuff. So that's going to be the password lip to so pass lip. So let's check it out. It's going to be, let me make it bigger and beautiful. I hope you are learning something. So in case you have any question or contribution, you can just put it inside the comment section below and please don't forget to subscribe and check the link below for some interesting material to help you with all these things you are doing. Let's go on straight away. It's going to import pass lip. So if I go with import pass lip, if I check for the DRL, it's not going to give us a lot of information because Passlib has a lot of features, right, beyond the scenes. So this, one, this is not informative. So I can now just move on from here. Then we have the different aspects we can do. So to get more information, this is not giving us information. So I can just go with this option. So import hashlib.hash .hash because I'm using pass, password lib hash to help us with that. Then I just come back to this place, dot hash. And now we can see that it's giving us a lot of features, right? So we can see what we can do. We can get the bcrypt, the bcrypt that we did. That, that's concept behind it. We can also work on Cisco if you are working with Django. So this particular library is very useful when you are working in different frameworks because they have su support for Atlassian, for bcrypt, for Cisco, for Django, for Hex, MD4, MD5. They have for SHA, LDAP, and then several other stuff, right? Including the normal SHA-1, SHA-1, SHA-5, and the rest. So let's check it out. So we already had our plain test, our famous plain test that we have using, plain test. Just in case I want to hash it, this is a secret. I can just come back here, so from pass lib, pass lib dot hash. From here, I can import all of these things. So I can import this one. We can import Sharecrypt, that's how they call their own. You can also import a uh, MD5 and all of these things and check it out. So, from this, import from this, import this, and then MD5 crypt. But you can have MD4, MD5 crypt. Hopefully, that is the name that it was called. So, we don't make a mistake. So, MD5 underscore script, right? You can use it to do the same thing above, right? So, I'm just going to import it. We did not import it all, supposed to be comma. Perfect. Now I can also use the same thing. So let's go to using SHA 256, right? So in that case, it's going to be something like this. I'm just going to go the same way. So let's call this one as hash test with P, right? So that you understand what it is. Then I'm just going to go with the same thing. We have my SHA. Let's first of all use MD5. So MD5 crypt. Perfect. Then I just go with dot hash. Now I'm passing my plain test. So the advantage of this option is that with with a uh, pass lip, you don't need to encode it right. Unlike maybe hash lip and then uh, 
bankruptcy. You can just go to the way with it. It's going to still work perfectly, right? It's said work. It's automatically going to do it perfectly for us. That's the advantage behind that. Now, from here, I can now go back to the hash test with P. Now, you can see that that's giving us this particular value, right? For MD5. And also try the same thing again for MD4. So let's check it back again. So I'll just come back to the same thing I did. And I'm going to run it and see to show you something, right? I'll show you something behind the scene of what you have done. So run it again. And now that's totally giving us totally different stuff, right? So anytime you run it, it give give you something different, just like the bcrypt. That is the advantage behind this particular system. Very cool and very awesome. Now let's try it again with the SHA. Two five six. Okay, we made a mistake because we we're supposed to see this one as say two, right? The first one, correct? And if we go back, it's going to be different. It's not going to be the same thing. It's very different, right? That's the advantage of passlib. It's going to always because it's in a different hashing system, right? Behind the scene. So if you compare the previous one from hashlib. This is the previous one from Hashlib. That hash test, right from Hashlib, and then we do the same thing for the MD5, right? So this is for Hashlib and this is for pass Passlib, right? You can realize that although they are using the same test here, and this one was with P, right, for the MD5, it's going to give us totally different result, right? Because using different libraries and then different mechanisms see that this one there's no there is no dollar sign here but this one this is scrambled with dollar sign so that is something very cool something very interesting so you should be careful when you are trying to use you are, when you are picking a library you should pick it should be consistent on a particular library you are picking to do the action otherwise you have issue when you are trying to log in into your system now just like bcrypt you can also verify the, the hashes right the hash test so in that case with the plane against the plane test so we had md5 so we did for md5 crypt and also go with verify now passing the plane test which was this is a secret so this is secret right then i'm just passing straight away with my test right so we can use this one to help us do the same thing there right you can try check it against my hash test with p so with p was the MD5 and we'll tell that it's true, right? Perfect. It's the same thing. That is something very cool, something very nice. So that is how to work with hash, right? Using hashlib, using bcrypt, and then using passlib. Now in the next session, I'm trying to see how to work with encryption, right? So that's what we're doing in the next session. But before we move on, there's also the option of being able to add your own custom round and your own custom salt to it. So let's check it out. So this is also work factor. Or the rounds you can also do the same thing with pass pass slip. so that means it's going to be let's call it as s1 right then i can just go with the same thing that i use let's go with sha5 no, 256 right dot crypt and i'm passing some also so in this case it's going to be not the script underscore script crypt dot using and i'll specify the sort i want to use so let's say sort i give it my own sort right let's say i'm going to add a random value to it so let's call that ef right this is a random number i'm adding to it then i just go with the next option of hash then i'll pass in my plain test so plain test so in that case it's going to use this sort this random word that i have introduced to it then it's going to give me a totally different one so if i go with this it give us totally different right very interesting it's going to add my own sort there which is this one here you can see that it is here in between this particular place very interesting very nice so you can also customize it and add your own sort to it and you can also add your own work factor so this one was for the sort and then let's work on the work factor you can also add a work factor to it so that is going to be this option so the same thing that we did you can also add a work factor to it in that particular option right so anytime you do this you can also set, set the rounds to to help you apart from this you can also set the rounds you realize that this one gave us this particular rounds here right so you can also customize it and add your own rounds to it sometimes it may give you errors because the round is not supposed to be too high if it's too high it's going to become slow right that is how to work with it so that's going to be an assignment for you now let's move on to encryption right because since we are taking a lot of time we are doing a lot of talking okay so let's go with encryption 
we learned that encryption is a two-way function encryption is a two-way function right encryption is a two-way function in which you are trying to check and see trying to encrypt a word with a with a key and algorithm then later on in case you want to get a plain test back again from the cipher test we will be using a the same key and algorithm so it's going to be our plain test let's go to our pl test to cipher test right something like that so let's come back here we've got our almighty plain test that you're using perfect so in case i want to encrypt it not hash it right so it's a totally different concept altogether all that we have done we cannot go back to get a plain test right we can't do that you can only ver verify you can also compare it but we cannot get it back again but for encryption you can get back in the test itself so we are using cryptography to help us with that's going to be import import cryptography so, so in case you don't have it you can just install it pip install cryptography then with cryptography, let's check the various methods you can do with this so cryptography man the spelling is long <laughs> okay perfect so these are the basic stuff these are normal stuff right this is normal stuff right there's not it's not that informative but let's check it more now cryptography has a very nice symmetric i think symmetric symmetric Algorithm. We learned that for encryption, you have two either symmetric or asymmetric, right? Symmetric algorithm to help us with that. I'll go. So it is called Ferris. So we're using that one to help us with that. It's going to be from crypto cryptography. From cryptography, right? Import ferret. So important ferret. So from cryptography.ferret. There are a lot of algorithms there, but to be using ferret is the most commonest one. Import ferret right <laughs> it's not coming okay that's the first one so we're going, going to be important ferret from cryptography is giving us an error no model name ferret so let's face it out it's supposed to be fairnet not ferret <laughs> see my spelling fair net perfect right not ferret fairnet so from cryptography dot fairnet import fairnet then first of all we learned that in cryptography we need a key right so this algorithm you have we have the algorithm we need the key plus the algorithm to be able to do our encryption right that is the only option we can do encryption that is the basic idea so we already have our algorithm finite using symmetric algorithm now we need to be able to generate a key that we use to encrypt our stuff right so that means that you have to be very careful here so let's go with this option let's view what this ferret fennet has to give up us before we move on which is very useful to help us get more information about what you're doing fennet so fennet is going to give us some stuff mm, okay see so that we can generate a key with fennet right we can also encrypt we can also decrypt right so let's first of all generate the key and it's very essential that you store the key otherwise if you lose the key you are lost right you cannot decrypt it so let's see how to do that so first of all we're going to create the key right we're going to create the key first before we move on so let's call this my secret key right then it's a secret then i'm just going to create this fernet that we created so it's going to be my we already created fernet above here we imported it so we can use fernet to generate a key then we work on this it's going to be fernet so it's going to be fernet dot generate key which is coming from this particular generate key above right you can see that we have this one here right so that's what you're trying to use generate key prefer it's going to generate the key which is store the key then we need to store this key right we should not lose it this is your secret key which you use to encrypt and then decrypt right so let's store it size so i'm going to call this file then let's go to open you can use the normal format to so open my let's call this one a secret key secret key right and that's secret key dot key secret key dot anyhow you want it to be so let's call secret key dot key right then i'm going to use write byte so write byte which must be inside this particular format i'm going to create a file then from here i'm going to write it to the file so file dot write i'm going to write my key my secret key on it so secret key so this 
key here is the encryption key right but i'm just calling it a secret key to make it better and then this is going to be my file dot right key right or we can even change this name so let's call it a secret file something like that so that it doesn't confuse you that is the basic idea and i'm now going to close it to file dot close so it's going to break so that is all so i'm just going to run it it's supposed to be yeah perfect so that's finished right now it's going to save it it's going to save it inside the particular file if i check it from here because that we have this my key here right secret key if i open it it's going to be scrambled right with this so this is the key generated there right which is the same key if i go back the same key if i go back here if i check this one here if i go with secret key see i spot it wrong <laughs> secret key right the same thing here the same thing is the same thing here right that the same way right but it's storing it inside the file right? so you should make sure that you don't mis misplace it otherwise if you misplace it you can't use it right so it's the same thing if i check it back again because that's the same key that we have that was stored right the same key right no difference very interesting so now let's see how to use this key so we have gotten our algorithm we have already gotten we have gotten our algorithm we have gotten the key now let's do our encryption that's going to be the next step so this is going to be our encryption now to encrypt it's going to be very simple it's going to be f right so let's create a variable called f right we realize that we also had something like this to create a key let's go with f then i'll just pass in my fernet or fernet right fernet then i'll pass in my secret key so we have the algorithm and the key so inside the particular variable then use this variable that we have to be able to encrypt it right to encrypt our test so we had a let's go to as we say mm, my test so my test then from here i'll just go straight away with my f dot encrypt encrypt i can't spell encrypt <laughs> encrypt and i'll pass in my test so the test there we had our plain test i can put it there or i can use the normal unicode format so string dot encode you have to encode it first and i pass in my plain test right that is all right so if i go with this option go to encrypt it and store inside this particular variable so if i go back to my test again it has been scrambled you can't see it right you can't understand it that's changed the entire stuff right so this has been changed so the only way i can get it back is to decrypt it with a key it's going to be description and it's very simple to decrypt it in this particular case this is going to be the first method because we stored it inside a variable here right we can actually decrypt it easily by coming back again to this option going to be my f dot decrypt remember that it's stored here right we stored inside a particular variable so we have this variable called f so we can actually decrypt it easily so this was my test it's going to give us the, the test right this is a secret very simple very interesting that is the first method now the next method is in case we store this inside a file so method two that is from a file so we have to open the file and work on this so let's call this as something different so that is going to be this option so i can just come back here go with my f let's go this. let's say mm, key file something like that then i'm just going to open the secret key that we had so we had our secret file dot key then i'm going to open it as read byte perfect right then from here i can now store inside this particular variable so let's go just my key then our old key anyhow encryption key anyhow you want it to be then i'm going to go with my key file dot read then i can close that key file otherwise dot close right can go with close like this or the normal close function any of them is going to work perfect so we have stored it inside this new key here right here's a new key and now i can use it to do my decryption or encryption so now i can just come back and create a new stuff so we can just come back here let's go as a new or nf right new f i'm going to do the same thing so finite then i'll pass in my key going to read that key store into the memory is giving us an error perfect so we're having an issue because you see when we're reading it we use this particular format so the next option of 
reading it, you can use you can use the rate the contest manager the rate option right to help you with that so that is more secure so that is why we're giving getting that error if i've used that one we will not have this error perfect now i can use the same thing to help us read our stuff right so i can just come back to this thing so new f then i'll just pass in decrypt our test so my test is going to decrypt and give us our result so that is how to work with encryption and then hashing so thank you for watching this long tutorial hope you have learned something please don't forget to subscribe so the basic idea is that there's a whole different concept between encryption which is a two-way function and then hashing which is a one-way function you have seen all the various libraries there's also pi crypto which you can also use to help us with that so that is the basic understanding behind all that you have done but before you move on finally let's learn about encoding then you'll be done right so encoding is the next step before we move on so coding is something very simple so let's go with coding you begin base 64 so you can automatically do a simple encoding like this right if i go with any string you can just encode it to the american standard ci is ASCII or etf8 it's going to convert it to this particular format right you can encode any string like this format or you can also use the base 64 so it's going to be import so base 64 so base 64 represents the there are 64 characters right so that means that the uppercase the lowercase we have 26 alphabet 26 alphabet for uppercase and then for lowercase right so 26 26 that's going to give us about the remaining 10 10 and 2 right i've forgotten it but something like that right so we have 26 26 we're going to be about SSS, which is 12 and then the rest right so let's not calculate it <laughs> so that's the basic understanding behind b64 right that's why it's called b64 so let's check it out so to do that it's going to be very simple you can just do the same thing so it's going to be let's import it because we have not imported it you can use b64 to also do the same encoding to base 64 dot b64 says for encode you can use it to encode let's say a normal stuff so you can encode a test so this is a test right you must convert it to bytes code to, otherwise it's going to give us an error so bring it as b right then it's going to work so this is another way you can also encode it it's going to encode it into this particular format so this is a b64 encoding right so that is something simple so this is for encoding so i can store this one inside a variable so let's call this one as let's say es1 right then i can decode this one again so in case i want to decode it not encode but decode you can also do the same thing in a particular format so we can actually use this one to help us with that right so this is the same test so in case i want to decode it i'll just go with the same option it's going to be my base 64 right dot b 64 decode and I'm passing my test example one right now it's going to decode it for us to give us the original test now that is the concept behind encoding the concept behind encryption and then decryption the concept behind hashing so thank you for watching this long tutorial where we have learned a lot of things i've seen the various ways we can protect our password and data so that is something very interesting so to recap we have plain test we know the best way to store data we have encoding which you have seen how to convert from one format to another format then we also have hashing which is a one-way function which we saw how to use hash slip and pass slip to pass with that as well as bcrypt which we add a sort to it then we have encryption right which in which we use cryptogram cryptography to help us with that we can also use pi crypto which gives you the option of both hashing and then encrypting so thank you for watching this long tutorial see you another time stay blessed